My name is Lisa Tran and I am currently a postdoc at Columbia University in the Chemical Engineering Department. I am currently a junior fellow in the Simon Society of Fellows, so that society is, uh, the idea is to bring in people from uh, different backgrounds, scientific backgrounds together and uh, junior scientists also with senior fellows to, to uh, interact with one another and, and discuss. So I study uh, liquid crystals, and so from probably a lot of people have heard about liquid crystals through uh, LCDs, liquid crystal displays, right? So the, what's nice about the material and why it's so useful in a lot of uh, technology and electronics uh, is because the constituent parts of the material are rod-like instead of, when you think about a liquid, you think about spheres being kind of disordered in space. And uh, if you think about a crystal, those spheres are then packed really tightly in a sort of hexagonal lattice. Um, but if you have rods, then there are different ways of ordering them, um, where one example is a pneumatic phase, a pneumatic liquid crystal. That's where if you have the rods, the centers of the rods are randomly oriented in space, but they're all pointing in the same direction. I know there's a push to having liquid crystals be developed for biological sensors, for instance. Um, what's nice about the material is that because they're ordered, um, you can have sort of small scale nanoscopic interactions, um, and then that can propagate out into the material so that you have sort of more micron scale or even uh, millimeter scale differences. And so that means that small scale changes uh, can produce sort of a larger scale difference. And so. That's, uh, that's one way in which you can use them to, to create uh, sensors. The idea of seeing what you're studying, and um, with materials physics, it's sort of very direct. You can use a, an optical microscope, and from seeing things, for liquid crystals specifically, you can see things um, at the many micron scales and then infer what's happening at the nanoscale because of the ordering of the materials. It has to, I think, have some sort of aesthetic appeal to me as well. Of course, you know, the, the, the field that I study in materials physics has a lot of different applications, but the uh, aesthetics in terms of how, how elegant a lot of the descriptions can be, that kind of appeals to me. Uh, being able to, to describe the, the structures that you see and, and understanding it in a sort of intuitive way, I think, is nice. So science, I mean, it's very powerful, right? You can have a theory and that has predictive power. It just provides a lot of understanding of your environment. And I, I appreciate the, the methodology and the, the how, how powerful of a tool that it is, right? And sort of understanding your environment and, and producing technologies, creating things that are useful for society, right? It's my favorite historical figure is James Clark Maxwell. I mean, he developed the uh, theory of electromagnetism and that's sort of the foundation of modern physics, right? He used to write poems, <laughs> so you can uh, find some of his like old uh, poems that have a lot of physics references in them. And it's, it's fun to read, yeah. So he's sort of like a, I guess back then there's a lot of uh, like polymaths, like they didn't just do science, they did multiple things. And so it's a kind of interesting to see two sides, right, of the scientist.